Hi, I'm Maggie Cooper and today we're going to talk about willow and basket making in the Trent Valley and particularly in Castle Donington. Castle Donington is situated in the Trent Valley between Leicester, Derby and Nottingham. Castle Donington was famous for basket making and other small industries like hosiery and lace making. We're here at Castle Donington Museum where there's archived material on basket making and willow growing and there's also a collection of baskets. Basket making became a great source of income for this area because of the transport links, but also because the soil is suitable for growing willow. Today we think of the Somerset Levels as being the most important place for willow growing and basket making, but that wasn't always the case. During World War I there were four main important areas for willow growing and basket making and in order of importance the Trent Valley was the most important followed by Maudsley, the Thames Valley and then Somerset. I'm just going to show you a typical basket that was made here in Castle Donington and it's a typical example of the sort of work that was done and produced here over the last two or three hundred years. I'm going to be demonstrating this sort of basket. What makes this a Castle Donington basket is the fact that it is made out of a lot of split material. The basket makers here developed a very fine kind of basket making, particularly the base. So if you have a look at the base, it's made of sticks that are bound together by the split willow and also the split willow is woven around it to form a very light weight but quite a strong base. The Castle Donington makers would have got their willow from here in Castle Donington but also from some of the outlying districts so some of the uh, areas around the Trent, the Saw and the Derwent which are the rivers that are just adjacent to the village. Right now we're at the edge of the industrial estate, Trent Lane. We're standing at the site of near the old osier beds, uh, osier beds as they used to call them here in Castle Donington. And you can see over around the horizon, we're standing in a line parallel to the River Trent, which is a few hundred metres on the other side. And there were more osier beds on that side. Now at one time there was only about 32 acres of willow growing here in Castle Donington. Uh, which doesn't mean to say that's all the willow they used. Uh, the growers and the owners of the willow beds and the basket makers had many more acres outside of the actual parish of Castle Donington. The willows in Castle Donington were highly prized because of the rich soil that, in which they grew and also a legacy of over hundreds of years, the varieties of willows being developed that grew in this area. And another reason is that the, the willows were nurtured and cultivated to a, a very high extent. So basically their willow beds were micro-gardened almost to get these wonderful um, good quality rods. It was particularly suitable as the soil was suitable for growing willow. Uh, it's just got, it's, it holds the water, it's quite heavy clay. Uh, also because of the flat fact that there were flood plains the willow beds have been moving around over hundreds of years and the oldest, one of the oldest willow beds was not far from here in Castle Donington, uh, just beyond King's Mills and that was known to be in existence in the middle of the 1600s. The sites of the old willow beds in Donington now are just areas of waste ground. But there's still evidence of one or two of the old willows just at the edges of these spaces. By the beginning of the 20th century, basket making and willow growing started to decline in the Trent Valley. The First World War had an impact on basket making in Castle Donington because the basket makers were making shell baskets and also the people that were tending the osier beds were at war, so the willow beds got neglected for two or three years. I imagine that when people were making these a long time ago, they would have done this a lot quicker. An experienced basket maker would make five or six of these a day, although the preparing of the materials may take a few hours. We're standing on Trent Lane and uh, we're standing next to a row of cottages called Moles Row. 
They were built by Herbert Moll, who was a rod grower, a willow grower, in the 1860s. We're not sure whether Herbert Moll came from a succession, a line of uh, willow growers, but he certainly did a good business in willow growing, owing to the fact that he could buy his workers cottages and put them up. The Trent Valley willow was mostly used around here because there were so many basket makers. Uh, these, these baskets were made for, um, in their hundreds for not only the domestic market, that would be people that were local, but they would also be made um, for, you know, for sale in local markets like Derby and Leicester and beyond probably. And literally they were made by the dreyful every day, so every day um, a dray or a big cart would leave Donington. Very seldom was there a surplus of material that could be uh, sent in to other places in the country, but they certainly did send some to other regions of the country, and occasionally ab abroad, very, very occasionally abroad. We're standing in the old tan yard, and this is a site where one of the biggest basket makers in Castle Donington operated. Crampton Award first came to Castle Donington in the early 1900s and they were a big company. They set up an organisation uh, which marketed the, the baskets that were made here, but they also took on basket makers and employed them. And they streamlined, streamlined and in, industrialised the, the manufacturing as far as hand-making baskets could be. And they employed up to 100 people on this site. They specialised in making all sorts of baskets. They were hampers, there were fowl hampers, there were baskets with wheels and trolleys and uh, agricultural baskets, pigeon baskets, and then it became the, the baskets that were made for the First World War. They were an important company for making shell baskets. Shell baskets were used for transporting artillery shells to the front line in the First World War. Everybody that was a good basket maker was um, used to make the shells, the shell cases. This is Donington Mill. I believe that this is where all the shell baskets were gathered on the daily basis for them to be transported to the munitions depot that's about five miles away from here. And this is what a typical Castle Donington base looks like. We're in Bondgate, which is a site of many basket makers, particularly around the turn of the 19th and 20th century. In the 1891 census, there was nearly 200 basket makers named and a few osier growers and osier peelers mentioned. There are three main firms in the village, uh, Crampton and Ward, Saxelby, who lived in the building behind me, and Lambert's that is up on the hill. Saxelby made all sorts of baskets, just as Crampton and Ward did, but they tended to specialise in furniture making. And Saxelby had a willow bed that was over towards Kegworth and up towards Nottingham, so they had their own family willow beds. The design of this basket is making a maximum use of the materials available. Um, it's showing that the basket makers knew how to use the materials that were for one season, from one season to another, sometimes not available and sometimes available in abundance. Because there were so many baskets being made in so many different styles, the makers here uh, reached the pinnacle of basket making of anywhere in the UK. We're in Clapgun Street and we're near the site of Lambert, who are a basket maker, hamper maker but they also boiled rods and grew their own willow, and this is their working yard. This slewing's done with brown willow, which has got the bark on, and they were sort of small, small, the smallest of the willow that was harvested, and perhaps some of the offcuts and the off, offshoots of the material when it was, um, after it had been sorted in the sorting yards. That needs tapping down now because I can see a few gaps where it's just lifted itself. So with the wrapping iron, I just wrap down so that it gets a nice even finish.
After World War I, basket making and willow growing became untenable and the workers sought other employment, uh, particularly in food growing, which was more important at the time. And by the 1950s, it became almost non-existent. In Castle Donington, basket makers didn't have to join the army. Workers were given a card and a lapel badge to show that they were working on war office contracts. However, some chose to sign up and you can see their names on the war memorial. So this is the finished basket. Um, I'm making a, a basket that copies a lot of the styles of the smaller baskets that were made here, although every kind of basket under the sun was made in Castle Donington. In the Trent Valley today, there's maybe one or two basket makers, but um, there isn't any willow that's grown commercially for basket making. 